I've been wanting to cover the following story for quite some time now. It occurred last year in February with a man named Simon Nullis. The attack happened in Little Bay, and it was actually caught on camera. It was probably one of the most shocking videos that I've ever seen in my life. And I wanted to share this episode with you to kind of give you a glimpse of just how real that nightmare was, as well as to help us draw a clearer picture of just what occurred. The following story is widely considered one of the most gruesome shark attacks caught on camera. This horrifying attack took place just off the coast of Little Bay near Sydney in New South Wales, Australia. With its sparkling waterfront consisting of photo-esque harbors, polished beaches, and vibrant city life, it's no wonder that Sydney is known as one of the world's prime tourist locations for vacationers, swimmers, and outdoor enthusiasts alike. Little Bay, on the other hand, is a much more secluded spot situated along the outskirts of Sydney. And due to its much less densely populated and industrialized beachfront, it's a prime location for those with a preference for a quieter, more authentic experience at the bay. To further add to its marvel, it is also one of the most eco-friendly coastal regions in Australia, both in terms of water clarity and bacterial count. The bay also consistently hosts an abundance of recreational activities, both on land and in the water. Ranging from its scenic golf clubs to its large surfing waves that crash over the shoreline, it's no wonder why the bay is known as one of the most perfect locations for surfers and adrenaline junkies alike. Little Bay is also known for having a very low amount of fatal shark attacks, with only one occurring roughly every 60 years. This of course is an assuring statistic for tourists, as it's no secret that Australia is known for having one of the largest populations of great white sharks around the world. Having recently retired from the British Royal Air Force, 35-year-old Simon Nellist was just settling in in Australia to get married to his recent fiance Jesse Ho, who he was in a long-distance relationship with at the time. Simon was an experienced scuba diver and dive instructor, and by all accounts was extremely excited to live near the coast so that he could make swimming and scuba diving a part of his regular routine. Simon always loved the outdoors, and now that he was living just a few kilometers away from the bay, this was most certainly an opportunity that he wasn't going to let go to waste. Shortly after moving into his new home, Simon would sign up to a local swimming race called the Malabar Magic Ocean Swim, which was set to take place on the 20th of February, 2022. And since he lived so close to the bay, Simon would go for a swim for at least half an hour each day in preparation for the event. On the warm Wednesday evening of February the 16th, Simon dons his black wetsuit and sets out to the shoreline of Bucan Point, a small peninsula of Little Bay that due to its rocky and uncomfortable seabed is rarely used by other swimmers, allowing Simon to finish his laps uninterrupted. As he takes his first steps into the warm water of the lagoon, he observes several fishermen casting their lines off the steep cliff above him, and so does his best to avoid being hit by their hooks as he continues to advance with each stroke further and further away from the beach. After swimming out against a strong breeze pushing him back towards the beach, Simon comes to a halt about 150 meters away from the shore, which is when, as he usually would, he'd start practicing his familiar strokes, sinking into a deep trance as he repeats the same motions he always had for years. An estimated 15-foot-long great white suddenly emerges from the depths of the crystal blue water. It's important to note that sharks have an exceptional hearing ability that allows them to find prey before being detected, and they do this with their supreme ability to sense low-frequency vibrations in the water, such as the ones made by a wounded fish. The shark then continues to move closer towards the shore of the rocky lagoon while simultaneously searching for any movements, and as Simon continues practicing his strokes, with his back facing the open ocean, his vibrations on the surface of the water are unknowingly attracting this great white. As it closes in on Simon's location, it quickly spots a large figure moving through each wave, which is when it begins zeroing in on him. When great whites prey on the surface of the ocean, they do so by breaching the water and launching themselves into the air with their jaws wide open, allowing its prey to fall deep into its mouth so they can clamp down to secure their grip. This in turn, of course, causes devastating damage to the vital organs of its unfortunate victims. In fact, these ancient super predators are known for their ability to breach the surface of the water, leaping up to 10 feet in the air. This behavior is often seen as a predatory hunting technique or as a form of communication, 
and even today scientists still do not fully understand the reason for this behavior, where some theories suggest that breaching helps the sharks dislodge parasites from their skin, others suggest that it may be a way for them to intimidate rivals, or even attract mates. The Great White is now only a few meters away from an oblivious Simon, and just as he changes direction while he's swimming, the colossal 1,000 kilogram Great White breaches through the surface of the water underneath Simon, forcefully launching him high up in the air as a shark clamps down on his torso, causing severe damage to his internal organs and limbs. The shark then crashes down into the water, causing an immensely loud noise that alerts everyone in the nearby area. It's at this point that the water around Simon begins turning blood red, as he desperately attempts to swim away from the shark with the little remaining power that he had left. He then somehow manages to free himself from the immense grip of the shark, and for a very brief moment, he attempts to swim away from it desperately with all that he had left in him. The fishermen on the beach, who at this point are frozen in shock from what they're witnessing, look on in horror as a shark once again latches onto him and begins violently shaking him from side to side, sending large splashes of bloody water and flesh across the lagoon, visibly ripping entire limbs off of Simon's body and mortally wounding him in the process. Some of the fishermen suddenly break out at this point from their paralyzed state and signal for help to the lifeguards who are on a nearby beach. One of the eyewitnesses would then pull out his phone and begin reporting the now infamous video. And while a majority of shark attacks haven't been caught on camera, this video perfectly encapsulates just how terrifying the experience would be for anyone unfortunate enough to experience it. And just as the seconds of the attack seem to turn to hours for those watching on, the shark finally disappears at this point below the surface, never to be seen again. Just as a side note, I've uploaded a version of this video to my Rumble and Patreon accounts. You can watch it for free on Rumble. Here are the usernames, I'll pop it up on the screen for you. I wasn't able to post it here due to this platform's much stricter restrictions, especially nowadays when it comes to content that it deems too sensitive or inappropriate. Authorities arrived very quickly on the scene, and after a short but intensive search, they were able to locate Simon's remains floating in the water. It was later believed by the investigators that the shark likely mistook Simon for a seal due to the black wetsuit he was wearing. Simon Nellis was set to marry the love of his life only shortly after the attack, but tragically, he and Jesse would never get to live out their dream together. While many frequent goers of Little Bay would agree that swimming in its waters comes with the inherent risk of a shark attack, this would once again be only the first unprovoked fatal shark attack in its waters since the 1960s, making it all the more tragic for a man who otherwise was about to live the dream life he always wanted. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode about a caretaker that was viciously mauled by a pack of wolves she was in charge of is sure to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video. <laughs>